Good afternoon then everyone as we are at the end of another week of training on Friday the 5th of July. A uh, bit of a broken up week, still some action though, a couple of things to go through, but a bit of a broken up with um with thank and not Thanksgiving with Independence Day in the US. Obviously yesterday. So US markets shut yesterday, US uh, equity markets, bond markets shut yesterday. So a lack of volatility across them. So a little bit of dollar weakness yesterday, kind of a bit of a spillover from a bit of a spillover from Wednesday, but some pretty weak economic data over the course of this week from the uh, from the US. You've got the ISM manufacturing PMI on Monday below 50, also below consensus. You've then got the services PMI on Wednesday below 50. 50 and massively below consensus and got non-farm payrolls today and you know 10 of the last 15 non-farm payrolls the previous month has been revised lower this month previous month and april both got revised lower so you know cumulatively cumulatively 110,000 jobs taken away that they said were added in in in, in may and june or june and may sorry or in May and April, sorry, these are the June figures, and then we get the numbers from May and April. So 110,000 jobs down, which kind of make today's, what, 84,000? Or 94,000, should I say, um, if you look at it on a cumulative point of view. Again, these calculations and stuff, it's a fair bit off. Well, yeah, 10, every, now 10 of the last 15 non-farm payrolls have been downward, downward, uh, downward revisions as the number has come out, and that causes a bit of chop. But certainly, uh, you know, Pretty pretty large deterioration of the um of the U.S. labor market. Unemployment rate continues to tick higher, up to four point one percent above consensus. Now that is trending higher. It was back at three point five percent back in um what was it January twenty three at three point four. It was back at three point five, well three point four in April, back at three point five in July twenty twenty three, and has been rising fairly steadily steadily since then so you can see a pretty solid uptrend in the unemployment rate each month since march it has ticked up by 0.1 percent so that has continued this month and again a weakening of the u.s economy manufacturing pmi negative right services pmi negative you had the adp figures on wednesday negative your jobless claims continuing their trend higher on wednesday negative you then get non-farm payrolls the unemployment rate today negative right so pretty large deterioration of the u.s economy this week jerome powell said on wednesday that he or tuesday should i say that i do still need to have a bit more time to to be fully confident of cutting interest rates economic data at this point point in time is suggesting interest rate cuts probably sooner rather than later from the u.s get them it's obviously a bit of a different question we also have got a, a new prime minister in the uk um, it was about an hour ago, hour and a half ago. Uh, so Keir Starmer had uh, gave a gave a speech. Obviously, he's going through all the formalities of of getting getting his promotion. But Labour landslide victory, four hundred and ten seats. They have got one of the biggest swings. Um, I mean, I was reading earlier on, like something like something like. In terms of the amount of people that voted, it was the lowest turnout of voters in the UK from over the last 100 years. Right? We've got, I don't really think this is Labour winning the election, to be honest with you. I think it's just the Conservatives losing. I think people just are just sick of the Conservatives, and the only other option really is Labour. I mean, you can obviously, uh, the Liberal Democrats have, have done extremely well. They're up about 70 seats. A couple of the other parties. I mean, Reform UK, they've only got four seats in relation to. Liberal Democrats, 70 odd, but they had more voters, pe more people voting for reform than than you had with the Lib Dems. Yeah, they have 70 seats and 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 reform have four. So if you kind of think about it from that perspective, more people voted for reform. You're not a genius about politics, which I don't think most people are really, to be honest with you. But kind of doesn't really make too much sense how a system like that can work. But anyways, that is that is it. But yeah, only what was it? Only only twenty percent or something like that. People of the UK voted for voted for Labour. You know, they only got a third of votes nationwide. I think it was lower than twenty percent. But basically what I'm getting at is I don't think it's a Labour win, really to be honest with you. I think people are just sick of sick of the Conservatives of all their uh, yeah, all that kind of mistakes they've made over the last few years. But anyway, what that means for the economy going forward and for the UK, I mean, historically, Labour haven't been great for, 
for, for, for UK assets. They seem to be a bit more pro-business these days. Obviously, you know, politics is politics and they tell the people what they want to hear in order to get into power. So we'll reserve any judgment until they start trying to get their manifesto true. But yeah, the fact that they're a bit more um the fact that they are a bit more pro business for the UK uh, remains to be seen what they do in taxes do they go and try and increase taxes but i think markets kind of taking a bit a bit of comfort from the fact they got, can't go and massively increase increase government spending in different aspects of the economy because there's already a lot of debt so you got to find the money from somewhere do they get that by raising taxes is it the wisest of ideas to raise everybody's taxes when you've got a cost of living crisis, I'm not so sure. The funny thing will be, though, in a few weeks' time, or a couple of months' time, the Bank of England will go and cut interest rates, and you know, people who don't know any better, which is the majority of the population, unfortunately, will go and say, "Well done, the Keir Starmer. Well done to Labour for lowering mortgage costs." <laughs> it's supposed to be the Bank of England cutting interest rates, but that will happen. Which again, this is a really best thing for people to be voting on things where they're very gullible to what they're told. I don't know. I don't know you may obviously can't go any other route about it but yes most people aren't geniuses in politics which i suppose it is it is what it is but only a third of voters actually voted for, for labor they got 410 seats and yeah good luck to them probably time for a change regardless of whether you historically are conservative or historically are labor whether you agree or disagree with any of their policies or the people in charge of the government it probably is the right time for for a bit of a change up I mean, in terms of economic policy, I think for most people, the policies that, cons that the Conservatives have are, um, or the policies, the policies that they go off are probably, probably better for, for business and probably better for people. But if it's run by a gang of muppets, there's not much you can really do about it. But, um, anyways. Time for change. How that involves over the next few months, few years remains to be seen. Again, it's not really a conversation for today, but no massive volatility across Sterling off the back of that, as we did not get any sort of a surprise. Um, we also had French uh, French elections over the over the weekend, or kind of French polls over the weekend, suggesting that um, uh, Le Pen's side of things will will get in. It, it's kind of a sweeping thing across Europe, you know, Europe moving towards more right wing governments, and then the UK took a step in the other direction and moved towards a bit more of a left wing government. So, a bit of a bit of a change up from the UK. Probably it's because that's like so sick of centre right. I think they call the Conservatives whatever that, whatever that means these days, but. Um, I say whatever that means these days. Obviously, we know what it means, but I think the difference between right and left is a little bit different than what it has been historically. But anyways, that's not something that can make us money in financial markets, and that's what we're here to talk about. Um, dollars across the board this week haven't been great. You can see your Aussie, Kiwi, Euro, and Sterling pushing higher. Dollar Swiss, Dollar CAD, Dollar Yen pushing lower. Dollar Index then obviously dragged lower with it. That is due to broad-based weakness in uh, broad-based weakness in the US dollar, but pretty negative data across the board from the US. Stocks have kind of liked it, right? Stocks have been higher this week. The S&P, the Dow Jones, kind of Monday, Tuesday, grinding higher, just been chopping sideways since then. But you know, the S&P, the Dow Jones, the Nasdaq, the Russell's been all over the place. The Russell didn't like that data on on Monday, but the rest of them due to finish the week higher. Um, again, is it a positive if the US economy performs negatively? Not really, but the fact they're going to cut interest rates probably sooner rather than later, markets like. But if economic data deteriorates massively and falls off a cliff, that will not be positive for stock indexes. So it's positive at the point in time in which it's okay and they cut interest rates, but if it gets worse than that, then um, that is a different that is a different story. Bond yields lower up there across the board. Monday was pretty positive. Why it, why it popped higher off the back of the manufacturing figure? I'm not entirely sure to be honest with you, but after that it's just trended lower. Obviously, you had the gap between uh, back gap between Thursday or Wednesday afternoon for us. Was the evening for uh, for us, and then and then the entirety of Thursday they opened back up this morning for trade, and they are lower. Over the course of this week, uh, gold just moving in line with the dollar higher over the course of this week. Silver doing the same thing. Oil's been a bit choppy this week, has been trending higher over the last few, but uh, main movers across main movers may be somewhat surprisingly this week with it being Independence Day yesterday and a bit of a shortened week from the US is actually US related assets. US dollar weakness, stock strong yields weakness but that US dollar weakness probably set to continue. We'll keep an eye on US data going forward, but you know you have massive uh, massive negativity surrounding the uh, the US dollar this week you have to imagine that's probably likely to continue with interest rate cuts surely being talked about 
with a lot more a lot more intent over the coming weeks. But we'll cover that when it gets to a uh, weekend of football this week. Those of you that are supporting England, I mean, I'm Irish, so I don't really wish you any luck, but enjoy the game if you're watching it tomorrow. I've uh, got a couple of better games today, which we'll give a, we'll give a look at. But anyways, we will... Um, I will see how that pans out over the weekend. So enjoy that. If you're watching it, if you're not watching it, enjoy whatever you're doing over the weekend. And we'll speak to you again next week for another week of trading.